All right, and here we are with section 5.3, partial fraction decomposition with me, Mr. Hain. All right, so um, we've been doing a lot of good work with matrices, and now we're going to start applying them um, to partial fractions. And I'm sure that you're asking yourself, what the heck is a partial fraction? Okay, so here we go. A partial fraction is used to find a function when the rate of change is known. Now, rate of change is a calculus topic, but we can actually apply what we know about algebra currently uh, to find partial fractions. Think of expressing a complex function as a sum or difference of similar functions, uh, simpler functions rather. So uh, taking something uh, really complex looking and then breaking it apart into smaller, under, more understandable pieces. It's kind of like working backwards from adding and subtracting a rational expression. Okay, so I've been speaking very esoterically, and now let's see if we can just put that into practice and see concretely what I'm talking about. So I'm going to work forwards before working backwards to show you what partial fractions look like. So we're actually going to simplify... Um, this uh, set of a, is a difference of rational uh, expressions. So 3 divided by x minus 4 minus 2 divided by x plus 2. So this is actually the result of a partial fraction decomposition. So we're going to be working to get our uh, functions to look like this one here. However, in order to give you an idea of what's involved, let's work backwards from this one to see what we can, where, what we get to. So I don't like the fractions, so I'm going to multiply both by the denominator, and that'll merge the fractions into one expression. So when I multiply the first uh, fraction, I, I, the x minus 4 is canceled, and x plus 2 uh, is multiplied in the numerator with a 3. And the same thing happens with the second fraction. Uh, x plus 2 cancels, and the x minus 4 multiplies the 2. And here's what it looks like. So you see now that we have a single fraction divided by the product x minus 4, x minus 2. And I have this at the top. Now in the numerator, I can start simplifying these. So I distribute and simplify. So now I have 3x plus 6 minus 2x plus 8, and I have this plus 8 because it's a negative 2 times a negative 4. Um, I'm going to simplify the numerator. I can combine the 3x minus 2x and the 6 plus 8. So that gives me x plus 14. And reversing this process is how we find a partial fraction. So we're going to actually start with something that looks like this and work our way back to something that looks like uh, 3 over x minus 4 minus 2 over x plus 2. All right, so let's take a look at partial fraction decomposition. It can only be for performed where I have two functions as a quotient, so p over x divided by q over x. P, and a, p, over, p of x and q of x have no common factors, so we're always going to be checking that. Don't worry, I'm not going to try to trick you. I'm trying to just build understanding here, so you, don't, you aren't going to have to factor and start canceling stuff out in the work that we do for my course here. Uh, the degree of P must be less than the, deg the degree of Q. Um, if it is greater than, then we can actually just simplify it. And there are four different cases and methods. So we're actually going to look at four separate cases and each of the different methods. Um, the method actually is pretty much similar. Uh, it's just in how you set up the partial fraction where they differ. Uh, and no matter the case, the denominator must always be factored first. Now, I can't stress this enough. See, the thing is, um, the examples in this uh, video are going to be factored for the sake of time. Um, but if you're taking my course, uh, the homework contains fractions with unfactored denominators. So remember that you must factor those first. Always factor those first. Always factor those first. Cannot stress that enough. The denominators. Okay, so partial fraction decomposition. Uh, from here on out, you're going to see me abbreviate this as PFD, uh, uh, case one, uh, where Q of X, or the denominator, has distinct linear factors. So it looks like this. Boom. Uh, X minus 3 and X plus 4 are both distinct linear factors. They're linear because neither of the variables X in the denominator are raised to a power greater than 1 in their factored form. So that's why they're linear factors. Okay, sweet. So what do I do from here? Um, well, I know what you're thinking. You probably don't like the fraction. So um, first, before we get rid of the fraction, we need to actually set up our partial fraction decomposition. So I'm going to take each term of the denominator. And see, this is the key part here, and you're going to see me do this all throughout this video. 
is I must take each term of the denominator and the power of each term of denominator, you'll see that later, and express it now I, as a fraction. So because they are linear, I only have the variable a and the variable b. And you notice that those both of those fractions, that's the sum, it's always going to be the sum, is going to be over each of the factors of the denominator. So the denominator is the key to everything that we are doing with partial fraction decomposition, which is so key to why we have to make sure that it is factored. All right, let's buckle up. Here we go. You don't like the fractions. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to multiply by the denominator. So we're going to multiply by the factors of the denominator. What that does is actually going to cancel out all of the denominators. So it's going to leave us with just 5x minus 1 because both terms cancel when we distribute. Now for the first fraction, the x minus 3 cancels, but the x plus 4 remains. So we're going to add, or that gets multiplied to the a. And here we see that um, the same thing happens with the second uh, term. Uh, the x plus 4 cancels, leaving us with the x minus 3. Okay, so I'm going to move a little briskly in the state sake for the sake of time, but please rewatch this as this is absolutely key. So after multiplying uh, by the factors of the denominator, we're just going to distribute. So a times x and plus 4 and positive b times x and negative 3, which is what you see here in the light blue. I've distributed. So now I'm going to regroup the terms by powers of x. So you see nothing has changed in the red. I just put the ax and the bx together and the 4a minus 3b together. Now this is key to how we're going to solve these uh, partial fraction decompositions. Um, now I'm going to factor the coefficients uh, to, find, uh, to find the coefficients of x. So x factors out of the first group, and I'm going to put that here. I'm putting that on the right instead of usually where we put it in the, in the, on the left because I want to emphasize that a plus b is the coefficient of x. And I've just grouped, you see I have 4a minus 3b, I've grouped those together to emphasize that these are just the linear term. Now, why would I do that? The key here, and the key that lets us do this, is that these two polynomials are absolutely equal. Now, if these polynomials are equal, then something extremely important happens. The coefficients of x are equal. That's the only way that we can solve these partial fraction decompositions and to decompose the fractions. All right, so we're going to pick it up on the next slide from right here. And um, because of this, I know a plus b is equal to 5 because that's a coefficient of x. Notice on the right and on the left, I'm just referring to the coefficients of x. And here, the linear, the not linear, but the constants term, 4a minus 3b, uh, is also equal to negative 1. Now, that creates a system of equations. This is utterly, unbelievably amazing. Now, the key to this is that you can see from before, I'm going to actually use a, a matrix equation to solve this. Now, I have a 2 by 2 um, times a 2 by 1 is equal to a 2 by 1. And, of course, I'm going to use the trusty matrix equation. So, I have uh, inverse of a times b, a being the first matrix, and b being the second matrix. And that gives us 2 over 2 and 3. What are 2 and 3? 2 and 3 are just the a and b. So uh, that's what goes into the partial fraction. Now I'm going to rewind on this slide. So you see I have a over x minus 3 and b over x plus 4. And that's where these go. The 2 and the 3, they go, the 2 is the a and the 3 is the b. So you can see it's a little bit clearer on the upcoming slides. But feel free to pause this and look back because I'm going to assume that you know how to cancel the, frac the, the fractions and then I'm just going to kind of flow through the steps to get us to where we need to be. All right. And now that you're back, here we go. So case two, a partial fraction decomposition of p over x, a p of x over q over x, where q of x has repeated linear factors. Now this is going to be re -import really important. You see I have x minus 1 squared. Now you might think that's quadratic. In fact, it is. In fact, this whole denominator is cubic. However, this um, allows us to set up our fractions, and you'll see what I mean. I have a over x, which is the, the first term. Then I have b over x minus 1, which is the first power of this repeated linear factor. Then I have c over x minus 1 squared. Now, the key here is that every partial fraction decomposition 
every partial fraction is representing every single power of every single term in the denominator, which is why I have x minus 1 to the first power here and x minus 1 to the second power here. Awesome. So you know what to do. We're going to multiply by the, by the denominator of the, our given to cancel the fractions. So I'm going to distribute, and once I've distributed, um, you'll see that I've squared the x minus 1 squared, and now I've distributed the a over the o over it. B times x, uh, b of x, b times x times x minus 1, bx squared minus bx, and then of course I have cx here at the end. So I'm going to regroup them and then factor so I can get the coefficients of each term. Now you see here I've added in blue um, 0x squared because I have no x squared term in my original numerator over here. I must add the 0x squared and that reminds me that a, uh, that a plus b, the coefficient of x squared, is going to be equal to 0. Excellent. This gets me the following system of equations. And the system of equations we can simply put into matrices use our handy-dandy matrix, matrix uh, equation. And this gives us 2, negative 2, and 3. Now, what are these numbers? Now, these numbers go back up here. They go back to A, B, and C. So my answer is just going to literally be these right here, the partial fractions. Kaboom. And you see, instead of A over X, I have 2 over x. And instead of b over x minus 1, I have negative 2 over x minus 1. And again with c, I have 3. Excellent! Case 2, where the denominator has repeated linear factors. On to case 3. Now case 3 is where uh, the denominator has, non, has a non-repeated quadratic factor. So this is the first time that you're going to see a quadratic factor um, in our partial fraction. So along with this denominator, I'm going to have a different partial fraction. Now you see here I have bx plus c. Now the primary reason for this and the only reason for this is I have a quadratic factor in my denominator. So that's what creates the bx plus c. But the method is still going to be the same. I'm going to multiply by the factor denominator uh, and bx plus c again because it's a quadratic factor. That's going to cancel the denominators and give us what to distribute. Uh, I'm going to FOIL this one, uh, the second term, and now I have all of my terms. Now this lets me rearrange and group them by powers of x, as you see here in red. And after I've grouped them together, I'm going to fa factor out the powers of x. So, okay, so quick question, what a plus b is equal to what? If you said 8, you are correct. And what is negative 20 equal to? If you said 2a plus 3c, you are correct. And 12 is equal to a plus 3b plus c. All right. So that gives us a following system of equations that we can put into our matrices. Use the matrix, uh, equ uh, inverse matrix equation. And that gives us a, b, and c. Now this is going to solve us a heck of a lot of time by, instead of solving by hand. So use those TI-83 or equivalent calculators. And that let, lets us substitute here again back into uh, the partial fractions. And I have my answer. Sweet. 2 over x plus 3 plus 6x minus 8 over x squared plus x plus 2. Well, plus 2. All right. Still with me. Here we go. We're coming near the end. This is the fourth case. And then I've got some practice problems for you guys to check your understanding. And these are, are absolutely all correct. Um, so case four is where Q of X has repeated prime repeated quadratic factors. Now X squared plus one is prime. I cannot factor this without imaginary numbers. And it is squared. So quick question. How many fractions will I have? If you said two fractions, you are correct. I have to have every single power of the denominator represented. And since both of those are quadratic, um, or yeah, quadratic, I have ax plus b and cx plus d. Do not get scared. People get scared when we start having four by four matrices. Don't worry, remember your calculator does all the work. Multiply again by the factor denominator. It's gonna leave us with the following expression and only one uh, part to FOIL. Boom, I'm gonna regroup. Now, this is really cool because when you see me regroup, there's only one cubic term, 
only one square term, only two linear terms, and a single constant term. Now, for the sake of just keeping this consistent with the other equal, uh, methods, and also uh, to reinforce more complex problems that are in the in the textbook and also in the homework assignment, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this into the matrix. Now, you'll see that I already know that a is equal to 2, b is equal to 0. Um, so that kind of lets you know what c is equal to, and I already know d. However, I'm going to put those into the matrices just to emphasize how, how the method I use to solve partial fraction decomposition. Um, that gives us our four terms that we're going to put back into uh, our partial fractions. So I'm going to substitute those terms back in. And again, because b is equal to 0, um, I just have 2x in the numerator for the fourth checkpoint. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a heavy, heavy, heavy video. So I would suggest rewinding, going back, and making sure you understand each of the steps that happen in cases 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now I've got some problems for you to try. All right, here we go. All right, so it's your turn. Let's take a look at this one. I'm not going to help you that much. Go ahead and pause the video. When you come back, I'm going to have some work on your screen, and it'll show uh, kind of about the checkpoints that you should look at in your work to see if you're on the right track. And you're back. Boom. Here we go. Uh, yes, that was a repeated linear term. That was case two. Um, you should have this as your factored uh, form before you set up into equations in green. And your answer is 1 over x plus negative 8 over x minus 2 plus negative 8 over x minus 2 squared. All right, ready for your next one. Boom. Here you go. I'll pause the video, or you can pause the video, and then check to make sure I'll have these same three checkpoints up. Um, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, and the, including the answer checkpoints up to, for you to check your work. And you're back. Boom. Here we go. Um, so this is very, very straightforward as to what you're looking for. Um, and make sure that your answer is 3 over x minus 4 plus 2x minus 1 over x squared plus 5. And now for the final level, the boss problem. Okay, uh, we have this as our problem here. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you if you end up with the same five checkpoints of work that I've been showing you for the other three on your own. And we're back. Boom. Here we go. Um, that's a big 4 by 4 matrix, but we only have 3x over x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x plus 2 squared. All right, if you got those three checkpoint problems as your turn problems, um, you're, ready, you're done. Partial free fraction decomposition with me, Mr. Hain. Till next time.